plant, though. That's cool. The pot. Yeah, the, the pot. Don't, yeah, yeah, turn it around so the back can get out of it. Can be move where the cup is, maybe. Yeah, Ollie the Lava. I'm the nicest person I know. <laughs> you're, you're the nicest person you know? Yeah, that's my quote that the chick wrote on there. I'm the nicest person I know. Welcome to Bury the Needle with Divine Inc. I'm sitting here right now with the Supreme Leader. That's right. And Josiah. Yeah, get ready to get right into that mic, man. It's like he's like, actually a mumble rapper in training, so <laughs> forgive him. He's gonna be a sick mumble rapper. Yeah. And we got two special guests here. We got Rocco. Hello, hello. And we got Chris. Chris Duval. My counter. What's happening, brothers? Well, we're going to talk tattoo shops, tattoos, the industry, the future. You know, with Barry Needle here, we brought Chris Duvall on from, um, well, basically, Chris is Quebec, Ottawa, our gold patch member out there who takes care of the headaches. Hey, Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. I seen someone looking for you the other day, tagging you, Chris. But uh, at the end of the day, Chris, um, tattoo shops nowadays, everybody knows that I run shops. I do not tattoo. Uh, I'm a basic consultant, tattoo tailor is what they call me. I help people with their ideas, the right idea, the, uh, the best placement, and also advice on other artists and shops because, you know, there's always someone coming in saying I'm looking for this certain design. I might not have it here at my shop, but I do have a, a list of names. And, of course, I uh, direct them into another area, another shop, another artist. Um, tattoos are, are, are with you for life, but tattoos nowadays are part of the fashion world. It was, a, it was uh, you know, a, a biker, gang, street, you know, and so we have of, 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 uh, for, for people like that back in oh, the day, the good old days. jail, you know, oh. where a tattoo actually meant something. Okay. Nowadays, tattoos do mean something, but also a lot of stuff is about fashion, right? especially with the females. Um, and also, a lot of guys try to get tattoos and make them look tough too, right? And, you know, we know a lot of people like that. But like I said, what I've seen in the last 10 years is basically, you know, when I first got my first tattoo, I was 19. I'm 49 now, I'm saying. But what I've seen in the last 10 years is a dramatic change from light tables to iPads. Yeah. Um, there's no more drawing on tables. Just drawing on the iPads and push send, and it gets printed out. And that's it. It's, that's how easy it is nowadays. Well, everything I mean, is upgraded. The computers. The my shop used to have three light tables. I'm down to one just because I want to keep it around. Just for an you know. And also, you know, you got new artists that come out of the woodwork, and they get to walk into a fucking uh, a business like worldwide or anything and buy a machine. You know, the apprenticeship program I run here at East Van Ware Tattoo Company, the company that I order the machines, the machines are all in pieces. Like the apprentices have to put them together themselves. That company comes out of the United States. They will not allow a machine to be delivered to someone's home who has to go to a tattoo shop. Now, that's called respect. Well, there's, and Most there's, people nowadays can buy a machine off a website, yeah. and all of a sudden they start thinking they're tattoo artists. They don't know how to set the needle up. Set the machine up they don't before they go in too deep, there. right? So, like I say at the end of the day is that the industry has become saturated with terrible artists. And out of 100 artists, I would say nowadays maybe 15 or 20 are actually That's great artists. Super right? generous. I would say four or five. but No more passion. It's the thing. It's those freaking TV shows, man. Well, that's, when, that's when it all started to change. Is when it became instead of doing it for the pursuit of art, it became it became to be cool, or they thought they were going to make lots of money, or they thought it was going to make them popular, or you know, I'll just be straight up. I was homeless and I was hungry and I had a drug habit and and nobody would hire me. <laughs> that was it. And a tattoo shop was pretty much the only place that I was ever welcomed into with open arms. And treated like just another regular guy. So I just always found my home in tattoo shops. I was always treated uh, with respect and, you know, just, yeah, I was just another guy there. 
you know, I say that to people. I've got more respect in clubhouses and, and tattoo shops and skate parks and on the street than I ever did in a church. And I spent a lot of time in the church, too. So, you know, I find that the people in this tattoo shop, in Rocco's tattoo shop, whether that's clients, staff, uh, owners, artists, whatever it is, that's my family. Like, at the end of the day, these people love me. They've been working with me for a decade, and it's beautiful, man. All right. Chris, how is it over there in your area, brother? Uh, surviving. Trying to trying to beat this freaking thing. I hope that uh, shit gets back to normal one of these days. But uh, yeah, still doing good. Uh, making bigger pieces and uh, try to focus everything on the new shop. So trying to open up the new the, the doors here soon. So expecting on the, this summer, but like fucking COVID delaying everything. <laughs> So I uh, hope uh, hope we'll be open by the first of this year. And where are you opening up that shop, Chris? Uh, Graceville, Quebec. Correct. Yeah, cute little you, town. You purchased, you purchased that property, right? Yeah, yeah, about the whole building. Uh, it's it used to be an old furniture factory. So I uh, turned it into a shop. Half of it is a shop. I'll probably get some uh, build some apartments into it also. So. It's a little, uh, little risk, little in, uh, future investments, like we say. Good for you, brother. Good for you. Proud of you. That's it. You, and for me, is like, especially during COVID, is like you got to put all the chips on the table. It's like either you invest yeah. in yourself and you believe in yourself and you know that you're going to weather the storm with your brothers and friends and family, or you just you tuck your tail between your legs and just fold everything up and call it quits. Yeah. Those are your sure. options right now. So Early bird gets the worm, as we say, yeah? Like that, right? No surrender. Hey, Chris, how do you how do you see how do you see tattooing in the future? Like, what do you see? Well, like I say, when I started, I used to be uh, used to be very hard to get into a tattoo shop. So I can't even tell you how many doors I knocked on before I actually got to get somebody to actually open a book and actually see what I can draw. Okay? So, um, but today it's it's like I say, you can get a machine off the internet and. Uh, you, you get the pens now and like it's click and go and like everybody thinks they can do it but you know it's yes it's sad because there's a lot of bad artists out there but you know what with all the covers i've been doing this is just has paid my house you know? yeah. so the bad for a good you know but um so people when they want good work they usually travel for it you know um, like yeah. i I'm an hour and a half from the city, and like I'm, I'm booked pretty much every day. Say so, hey, people do make the one hour and a half ride just to come up to see me, get a tattoo, and then do an hour and a half back to go back yeah. home. And that's how we are here too, and that's why we moved our shop to Terrace to try and make it a little bit more convenient for my northern clients because I was drawing eighty percent of my business plus from Terrace or further when I was in Kitimat. So you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier. I'm definitely seeing more people come through the doors and definitely like we were at the beginning when I first opened, we were booking, you know, between five and seven appointments every single day. That doesn't, you know, when you look at it like that in four days, you're booking a month. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's, that's a good, good pace to get everything back to normal. So. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, right, lots of adjustments, um, say new, new rules and shit, but you know, you got to do what you got to do, you know? I think, you know, it's really cool. It's it's kind of one of the downsides, but it's also the upside for a lot of young entrepreneurs. I noticed when I was down in Vancouver is that the COVID closures and people losing and people uh, losing their spot because they decided to close their business has created a new opportunity for young entrepreneurs who never would have got into a space in Gastown or got into a space downtown Vancouver is because some of these corporations are medium-sized businesses have decided you know we're not going to be in there and then the rents are dropping because nobody really wants to rent a new space or sign a long-term lease during uncertain times you know that's why i got this building is because this building was for sale and the sale of the building fell through and he called me and said hey do you want to sign a long-term lease i don't have that opportunity right now so the COVID is what actually presented me with the opportunity because the market speculation and the guy who was going to buy the building just wasn't willing to take that risk during these uncertain times. Yeah, to that. Well, you know, since I've had the shop, 
up here on Commercial Drive, Little Lily, I mean, we have our variety of different styles. Uh, if you want to come in for uh, Dirt with COVID, we don't do no more walk-ins. Uh, if you want a tattoo, I do. You guys send it over, and we got to take a look at it. Um, but we are getting bigger pieces. We are getting more appointments. Uh, it is private consults, private tattooing. No more bringing in friends. No more support sitting by your side where you get tattooed. I mean, it's it's a whole lot. It's a way better concept now. I'm sorry to say. Um, less you understand when you're when you're the guy on the block, everybody wants to come and say hello to you. It's, it's a little bit annoying sometimes. So, I mean, I appreciate the respect and everything, everything but you're trying to run a business. You know, there's a place at a time, right? So, but like I said, through the COVID, the shop has survived. Thank Christ. Um, shops are closing down at least once, one at one a month here. One, one every week, one every two weeks here right now because you just can't make it. Vancouver right. did a little bit of a thinning on the tattoo shops. Like I think in the lower mainland, last time I checked, there was well over 600 tattoo shops. Yes, too many shops. That's for sure. Oversaturation, yeah. Yeah, same thing around here. Like uh, Gatineau and Ottawa, there's, geez, there's so many shops. Eh? We, we got a... A main street where there's actually like a, almost ten tattoo shops just on that that street itself, you know. Crazy. And how do they do, Chris? They do. They survive. They they're quite expensive, you know. But like in Ottawa, like there's so many shops that are popping everywhere. It, it, it's insane. Like uh, you go like the, the the mental of the artists here is they they, they come in. They go into a shop. You do about a year. After a year, they fuck off and they open their own. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when we started, when I started back then, like phew, we're what, like maybe twenty of us, say eh? if, if if that's that's if it's twenty, you know. Yeah. But now, like there, that twenty has popped into like three hundred, you know. So it, it, the COVID, yeah, it's, like I say, it's a good for a bad. So the the ones that are not that good, the scene, or just surviving, like I'm talking about people that do tattoo, not tattoo artists. Yeah. Well, those shops will close. I see. Make places for us artists actually like have a passion out of this, and not just doing this for the money. We're doing this because we like drawing, we like putting art on people and changing people's lives. I see. And like the the thing that I like the most is uh, is when I get a a girl that comes in with a she's got an issue with her with her look or. Oh, and she thinks that uh, uh, she doesn't feel right in her skin. One statue, and all of a sudden, she changes her tattoo. Liam Noy, one of Jimbo's protégés, he just rolled in. He's got a pack of his stuff and leaves. He's all going over. Keep going, Chris. I want the girl. Yeah, she's got a tattoo. She's got a tattoo. Yeah, 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 she's got a tattoo. Oh, I can't wait for the summer just to go out to see and then and, and show it off, you know. So it's that's what I like about that industry. It's it's not about the money. It's it's about like affecting people's life. Say right? like those people right. that carry a piece of you for the rest of their life. It's the only thing to get to bring to the grave, you know. Very right, Chris. What's the hourly rate up there in uh, in, in the East Coast? Well, I'm about one twenty an hour here. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm up in the country, so like I, I'm a little cheaper, so I make the people come to me, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. But when when I'm in Ottawa, I'm about one fifty. So the going rate in the city is about one fifty, one seventy five, or what? You know, about one fifty for the good artists. Yeah, no, it's not yeah. bad at all. We're one fifty ourselves down here with downtown area. It's like one seventy five, one eighty, two hundred. Right. Okay. You guys are expensive in Vancouver. Nothing's cheap down there. No. All right. But, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, though, what you get for your dollars is, is great. I mean, you know, we're doing four and a half hour pieces and the whole half a sleeve. I got two guys that are doing sleeves here a day, eight hours a day. Yeah. Two thousand bucks, right, for a sleeve. What's that? Yeah. Dirt cheap. Which is very inexpensive. I tell them that, too, but I don't yeah. know. I, I must say this job that we have, I, I can't call it a job. I call this a wet dream, you know? That's like it. I, just I never worked a day in my life. It's beautiful, man. <laughs> hey, it over? I said, he was just talking about loving our job. I said, that's right. I've never worked a day in my life. I get to, I get paid to draw on people, so. 
Yeah, draw, listen to music. You see, yeah. don't, don't get better than that. How long was Liam up there, Oliver? He's still here. We can't get rid of him. How long was he up there, Oliver? He, I think he was here seven full days. Talk into your microphone, Oliver. I can hear you better. He was here seven full days. Good. How do you do? Yeah. He did all right. He Why, he's going back home? He's going back home to be with his dog. Where's home? Is he still at the fall? No, he's got his own shop called Bearcat Tattoo. Where's that at? Where is it at, Liam? Uh, it's in Surrey. He's trying to say it's near Cloverdale, so it doesn't sound bad. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Liam. I wish you the best. He can't hear you. Yeah, well, that's good, because I didn't really wish him the best, now, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Any artist that opens up a tattoo shop, I think you're fucked in the head. Because yeah, the we day, are you fucked in the head. You don't have time with your hands to draw. For a box of tattoo. Uh, look at your front desk and make sure you're clean. Right? Am I not right? This poor boss. <laughs> well, I understand that, Chris. That's a, that's what you have to understand. Like Oliver just finally got a front ender, a person, right? Well, you can't not. be bothered. <laughs> you guys have to do tattoos. Yeah, Don't worry yeah, about the rent and all that stuff. There. Honestly, and I'm and I'm just I go through so much attrition because Rocco mentored me, so I'm a fucking asshole to everybody I meet. So I can't keep anybody around except the really loyal, trustworthy soldiers. That's it. Everybody else can't fucking stand me. <sighs> What are you going to do? It's all right. I'm an acquired taste like sandpaper. <laughs> sandpaper. It's like caviar. Yeah. No, caviar. Sandiar. Sandiar. <laughs> caviar, but sandier. All right. Well, what time do you have to be at the airport, Liam, for? Yeah. <laughs> So, no, your flight's at 5, isn't it? No, it's a little later. It's like 5.45. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Billy says, uh, I guess they're having tr they have uh, problems with way too many artists in Kelowna as well. Kelowna? Just looking in the... Kelowna's got too many shops with too many people who think they know how to fucking tattoo down there. Yeah. Well, you know, look at look where Jimbo's at now. Jimbo's in a shop with like eight guys. Good artists, and then they fucking like... Uh, like Chris said, they go start their own shop. Everybody thinks they know what they're doing, bro. No more loyalty. That's it. Well, there isn't. Hey, you know what? Let's, let's, what you no, guys let me, let me, let me. your artists is down there? Yeah, is it 50 50 or? 50 50 and then uh, some of them are 60 40. 60 40? Yeah. yeah, same shit here. That's what I do. Have a well, they bring their own clients in, right? I just keep making sure and everything. They charge 60% commission for them so they get 40%. That's usually just a very short time, two, between two and three months usually. Then they go to 50-50. And then they stay at 50-50 for a while, but their pay scale changes. Do you know what I mean? So instead of getting more commission, they start making more money. So yeah. that's how that gets elevated. And then once they've been around, you know, two plus years, then they start, you know. And once they've served, served in the lineage, like for Rocco or Jimbo or kind of worked for our crew or in our crew for years... Then it's kind of like just a respect thing. You pay forty percent. I give Oliver twenty five percent when he comes here. Yeah, that's what I get. I mean, he gets seventy. He gets twenty five percent. I need another twenty five. Five fucking headache pills. Plus, he asked for you to mock, right? That's it. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's it matters on how busy your artist is. Your, I your pay hundred percent commission, just so everybody knows. If your artist brings you in money, then it's it's good. But when you remember something, at my shop, they're my clients. That, yeah. That's my door. Yeah. So I'm giving you the clients. So what yep. I do over here, it's 50-50 plus I take 10% tip out. You know, my girls answer the door. My girls do the paywall. My girls advertise you on your social media. My girls, we, we do everything here. Post so basically, you just come here tattoo. So set up your tattoo for you. For you, what's that, Oliver? I can't hear you when you're talking. Oliver, they do. They do everything. They set up your tattoo. They tell yeah. So, anyways, tattoo. at the end of the day, that's what we do here. So the thing is, oh, the artist comes in and tattoos from twelve o'clock until seven. You don't got to worry about nothing else because they're making money. You know why? Why do they guys sit there and break down, down set up, and it's right, just bro. you know wasting time? You know what I'm saying, Chris? Come back. Yeah. 
Because so, here, when the, when the walk-ins happen, oh, fuck, it's, it's non-stop, it's brother. It's bottle, it's non-stop. Bro, I'll put that on the... In the right? Yeah. yeah. Good luck in a shop in Surrey there, Liam. Sunny Surrey. No, Skitty. So, did he do good out there, Oliver? He did good, yeah. He did good. He did some nice tattoos. Did you have clients for him? Oh, yeah, I booked him out. He was good. What did you give him, 50%? No, I gave him 60. 60. But he did a G- he did a G note almost every day he was here. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? That's how I kind of do it. it like I, I like to kind of cap it out at about 300 bucks. Like I don't I don't need to make more than 250 300 bucks a day off an artist. That's ridiculous. Like for me that's that's plenty as long as I'm Okay, so now office, Oliver. Yeah. Oliver. You break out how much your rent is daily. You break yeah. out how much electricity is daily. You break out how many paper towels, gloves and everything else he uses. Yeah, well, tattooing with, what, from about bucks. fifty dollars, forty to fifty dollars a setup to about seventy dollars a setup in the last two. You months. walk out with a ball. Oh, we lose Rocco. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what one hundred seventy-five bucks a day. Our material costs money. Our insurance is money. Our rent is money. Right? Yeah. So if if. You gotta break it down. You gotta come. One guy came in your time was tattooed for two years. He wanted me to give him seventy percent. I said, "I'll give you seventy percent of the fucking door." There it is, right there. I said, "All my artists are insured for two million dollars here." Okay, that costs them twenty five dollars a paycheck. That's fifty bucks a month. Every artist that sits down and does a tattoo, they meet my clients. That means they have future. But the thing is, it's my client. I give my client to you to tattoo and make sure you do a good job. And then what I want them to do is advertise them. Around the room, so everybody gets to have that client. What I try yeah. to attract here is art collectors. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So everybody gets a piece of the action. Everybody gets a piece of that canvas. That's what I like doing. Spreading the love around the room. It's like you going to a whorehouse. You spray you your cock around the Spreading room. your love around the room. <laughs> right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Once condom. But anyway, so what I want to say also, Malcolm, is my vision in this tattoo industry is if the government does not start getting tough on shops, making sure they're licensed, yeah, making sure that these artists are credible with their blood pathogens <laughs> and everything else that goes along with this fucking business. Or regularly should not allow them to fucking like open a dentist up. office. How come tattoo shops aren't regularly scheduled and inspected? That's a reality. That should be a real thing. Because they have no education, Oliver. I talked to all the spec all the time. They have no education. Let me be your volunteer. I'll walk around. Yeah. You know, you know, guys, in France, Lou, they have a special police task force that go just for freaking people that do tattoos in their, in their home, like for home shops. Well, Alberta is so even like that. Alberta is super, super strict, strict on home tattooing. They even have the ability to hand out fines that go against your FICO score. Like, Yeah. Uh, it's it's insane, but yeah, it, it should be like kind of like the States, you know? Like, like if you're not a licensed tattoo artist, you shouldn't be able if you yeah. don't have a license, you shouldn't be able to buy a machine. Well, it's just, it's, it's, for me, it's just it. aggravating that we work so hard, and you understand this, Chris. We put in months for renovations. We spend years saving money. We work our asses off to get everything set up. And that's, uh, you know, we spend weeks, if not months, getting health board certifications or business licenses or whatever it might be. Like, we don't take any shortcuts. We do it by the book. We do the reinspection. We make the amendments. We go through it. We deal with the city. We get the fire signs. The, we just, we, we do it. We go through all the bureaucratic red tape. And then somebody, like you said, can just walk in, spend 80 bucks on a tattoo machine and sit down at their fucking kitchen table and do a tattoo for 50 bucks. Like, what? That's, aggrav- the only, that's aggravating, but the reality is, is at least we're professionals and we can fix that $50 tattoo. We really do depend on that. I used to be yep. stressed out about scratchers all the time. And then uh, Rocco has been tattooed by my original teacher, Cliff Jarvis, and it, he just said to me, it doesn't matter, man. You're a professional. You, you, see his piece? you do better work than that. And you're it is. covering those shitty tattoos up. Don't stress about that. That's tattoos. Chris's piece right there. Cliffy, yeah. Demons all the way around to the fucking uh, gargoyle on top. That was done when I was 20 years old. Cliff Jarvis, one of my teachers. Front. My, my chest was done by uh, John Dutchman. Reco did my very first one. 
Jesus Christ. I'm not too taught Cliff how to tattoo. But Dutchman had to redo this one because the fucking cross was like a piece of plywood. <laughs> and Jesus looked like he was hungry, not starving, hungry. <laughs> but Dutchman, you know, is a good friend of mine. John's like the godfather of tattooing over here in fucking Canada. Absolutely. That's what I think. And I know from this, you know, the people he's gotten mentored. And it's funny when these guys don't give recognition to these fucking old timers that help them. Yeah. Everybody who becomes a tattoo artist thinks that they're fucking Hollywood. Like, I've experienced here with my apprentices. <laughs> and what happens? They get thrown out the fucking door. Then what happens? They don't work. Right. No one's working right now. Everybody's unemployed because there's no shops out there. What we got to do, you know, Chris, for Canada, is we got to get the city to make sure people go in and get a, a business license to be a tattoo artist. But you got to also show the shop that you're at's business license. To get that license. So this way you cannot just get a license to tattoo at home. Right? Yeah. No blood pathogen, no freaking license. That's how the blood pathogens, show the business show the business license of the shop that you're working at. With yep. a pay stuff. And that's it. You get your, you get license. That's something I'm trying to implement over here in Vancouver right? because I don't want these fucking artists tattooing people at their homes like that fucking what was that fucking brown guy's name, Oliver? Sanjit. San shit. San shit. A guy fucking tried to tell people like you should have seen this guy, Chris. He was so <laughs> tattoo school. Like so fucking into himself. Like, yeah, no problem. No problem. I would do school everything. I threw him out of here and uh, he started tattoo school and piercing. <laughs> like, I mean, are you fucking kidding me? I think he joined the one man gang. That's what he did. He joined the one man gang. That's where all the fucking losers hang out, the one man gang. Who is self-made? Fuck. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, can one of you guys explain a bloodborne pathogens thing? I'm not sure what that is. Bloodborne, bloodborne pathogens, pathogens is the education of how to uh, properly handle um, bloodborne pathogens and not cross-contaminate your shop. Just basically how to keep yourself, your shop, and your clients safe. Not touching bloody things and moving around and touching other clean things. Knowing about how to work in a station, knowing how to clean from top to bottom, what chemicals to use, proper sterilization temperatures and times. It's just really, it's anytime you break the surface of the skin, whether you're a dentist, esthetician, a tattoo artist, piercer, you should have that. Anytime that you're, anytime you're in contact with bodily fluids, you should be trained in bloodborne. So what's, what's the, now, what's let the me explain problem? something. To uh, you, Chris. Huh? And let me explain something to you, Oliver, okay? Now just listen to me. COVID has brought the mask to the table where everybody's got to wear a mask with a tattoo, okay? Now, I used to have an artist here named Sarah. You know who Sarah is, Oliver. Little Sarah. Sarah Sailor, yeah. So little Sarah used to always sit there and tattoo. She used to wear these yellow glasses, not for seeing, just to put them on. She used to always wear a mask, okay? And she tattoos. Every time she finished tattooing, she'd take the glasses off. She should show me. Of all the spots. Now, these are called blood pathogens. All the spots that came from the tattoo, it doesn't matter if it's the ink. It's also the blood. Yeah. It's also the skin. Yeah. It's also yeah. everything to do with that person going in your fucking eyeballs, okay? That's, that's, that's one. Yeah. Now, when you tattoo, you're breathing. When you're tattooing, you don't think those blood pathogens are flying in the air. They're coming into your mouth, down yeah. your throat. Yeah. So, it should be a fucking rule, and I made a fucking rule in my shop right now, okay? That the artists, I, I said my last meeting on, on uh, Friday. I explained this to them. I have told you what goes on. If you want to slowly kill yourself, keep doing what you're doing. Because nowadays, with all these fucking diseases, especially this COVID thing that's happened, when it's over, what do you do? Take your mask off? I told all my guys, you guys should all be wearing glasses, you should all be wearing masks all the time. This is the yeah. protection for you. I said, my insurance will not cover you if you have some kind of fucking HIV going through your lungs because someone had HIV or some other kind of fucking disease going through your eyes. Yeah. So, you artists should be thinking about this. And what, what I'm fucking saying right now, and it makes sense because in the day and the end, you're going to be all getting sick from these blood pathogens, right? I don't get it. I really don't get it. And you know, like the plastic sleeves? Yeah. Now, I used to fucking make bricks before, right? So I'm sitting there mixing all this cocaine up with my hands, with no gloves. By the time I was finished, I was fucking so high. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me, man? I had a mask on. It goes to your hands, too. It goes to your pores. 
So when you're sitting there tattooing, okay, we, we wear gloves. Why do we wear gloves for, Chris? Oliver, why? To protect our eyes. from the red. Chemical okay, but why are we wearing a mask and glasses? To protect our eyes and our fucking respirations, uh, respirations yeah, right? Yeah. Makes fucking yeah. sense. These are our hands. Well, they, this here is where you're they, fucking, where you're actually digesting. Face mask and glasses and eye protection and long cuff gloves for 10 years, man. Hey, Ollie. You well, I got sleeves here. I got aprons here. I got everything. I'm almost ready to go out for a smoke. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, That's my, my opinion in the tattoo business is it's being saturated. Uh, we're allowing too many people to start tattooing. Like when I do my course... I'm done with my course. I'm not teaching no more people how to tattoo. The last fucking three women I've, I've taught to how to tattoo all turned out to be three fucking cunts. Okay? <laughs> Bollywood cunts. They think they fucking know it all. And at the end of the day, all they're doing is digging holes in people because they don't know about how to put green or yellow or even red in. You know what I'm saying? They're not looking. They're not wiping. They're not doing the small circles to get that color in there. So at the end of the day, they know more than you. Get them the fuck out of here before they scar somebody. But if I do do another apprenticeship program, my course is nine thousand dollars for twelve months. Well, guess what? Now it's fifteen thousand for twelve months, and then sixteen months of critiquing. So you're here for twenty eight fucking months, yeah, and you're gonna it's wash my fucking something. toilets, scrub my toilets after I take a shit after Mexican food. I don't flush the fucking thing. <laughs> when I feel like pissing all over my floors, it's because I know you're gonna go in there and wash the motherfucker. This is the apprentice program. If that's how it fucking is. Yeah. You know, when I went through the program to get into East Van and the fucking HAs, what do you think we were doing? Scrubbing toilets, doing laundry, pouring drinks, making beds, watching lights, washing putting filters in joints. <laughs> they were fucking working, man. Wash my car, get me gas, go do this, go do that, go to your understand. You gotta show your loyalty. It sounds, it's like, passion. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, sounds like but the problem is I enjoy right doing all that kind of stuff. I was I was raised to fucking to work, right? I said I'm gonna shape Josiah into a mighty warrior. He's just he's kicking ass, man. He's painting, drywalling, rolling joints. <laughs> Helping at the front desk. He's just got a great. Oh, something like he's doing some personal stuff for you, eh? Oh yeah, he's a he's a homie on deck, man. <laughs> Josiah, yeah. Josiah, say something, man, before I fucking put my hand to the fucking microphone. <laughs> <laughs> say hi to everybody. How are you, brother? Hello, hello. What's that? <laughs> you can't say you say man. What did you say, Josiah? You say what? Right Sorry, what did you say? His microphone's not on. Yeah, you can get right up on that pop filter, right up on there when you're talking. Yeah, the mic will pick your voice up better. Yeah. Are you there? Uh, yeah. I can't hear him. Yeah. Go ahead. You can, you, can, you can talk. You can talk louder. Feel free to talk louder. It's all good. Hello. You're not gonna hurt my. I, that's just like go put your hands in your pants and grab your fucking balls and fucking squeeze them. Okay. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Squeeze them, and you're gonna, uh, you're gonna raise your yeah, voice. Okay. So how are things going up there, buddy? Volume, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you doing good up there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what? What exactly are you doing up there? Uh, working, dealing with uh, tattoo setups and stuff like that. So you're gonna, you want to be a tattoo artist yourself? I'm not too sure on that, actually. Just checking it out. So you actually also work in the front desk? Uh, yeah, over is going to be work on the front desk. Good. Are you from uh, Terrace? Uh, no, I'm originally from Edson. So where where do you lay your head down now? Um, I'm actually Oliver's roommate at the moment. Yeah. Oh, you live with Oliver? Yeah. Does he keep his Does he keep his house clean? Oh uh, yeah. Very clean. Well, I clean it most of the time. There you go. How long have you been there for now? Roughly a month and a week. You've been living with him 15 months? Roughly a month and one week. Oh, oh a month and one week. That's good. Yeah. So you're at the shop, you're living with him, and he's busy taking care of you. You get paid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't pay you, give me a call, eh, bro? Okay. So I do we'll collections. For you, I'll do 30%. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you in person, buddy. You're going to find me very funny. Yeah. Right, Josiah? Be nice and don't believe you. anything Oliver says, okay? Because I am an asshole. <laughs> One that loves people. <laughs> an asshole with a heart of gold. An asshole with a fucking heart of gold. There you go. So, Mr. Duvall, 
Hopefully, um, December, January, February, maybe we shoot for March because they say March is when we're going to start seeing a little bit of uh, virus uh, medicine coming out. We have guest artists for you over here, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, I was looking forward to it. Yeah, as soon as you get everything organized over there. Chris is actually going to do a piece on my back of God, Mother Mary, and Jesus speak here and talk no evil. I got a spot right between my Last Supper and my angels. Wow. That's going to yeah, be a big one. Not, not, not a lot of spots left, you know, so it's quite an honor. Yeah. That spot there is the best fucking real estate ever, bro. I tell you, man. I forgot I had it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's going to be a sick idea, and I think you're the perfect artist for it. The shit that you've been putting all in the my entire so amazing. Thank you, thank what you. we also have been working on, Malcolm, that you didn't know that myself and Chris have actually built our tattoo global tattoo team, which consists of Chris, Oliver, Andrew from uh, Windsor, and who else? Uh, Chris, I think that's about it for now, right? Yeah, that's it for now. We're totally traveling, you know, uh, when we're going to be at the expo and have this nice row with all the flags, you know, we'll attract more artists as people will come up and ask, eh? and then and they will give us a chance to expand a little bit more and get some better artists and enter our community and say, eh, grab a grower protein and then and spread the word all across the world, you know? Yep. Right. Well, we, 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 we would have done that, <laughs> but the pandemic slowed us down. But right when this thing's over, that's what I'm saying. We, we, we get the, we get the team together. And we hit it. Yeah. We hit it. It's going to be good. See that that shit reopens, you know. But today, there, there, there's ways around it there, too. People are starting to, to look into it. Instead of doing the tattoos expos inside, today, there, there are a lot more people outside. So there, there are people are starting to do expos with tents. Today, and, like, we have, uh, today, when it comes to uh, wrapping your tattoos, and, like, that shit has gone so long since what we started, today. I remember when I was a kid, and say, hey, we we get Vaseline on it and wrap with cellophane wrap and fuck off, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Later. Yeah, what you need to, to do? It's just to smell like oh. yogurt. Teacher <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> told me, man. Uh, hey, it smells like yogurt. You gotta take it off. Uh, it's like, it's like, and then, and then yeah, it gets red. You put preparation H on it. It's like, is this right? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Okay, so Operation H. Now, take it down. Say that our special wrap that we put on. Say that these people get to keep it on. Say all, all the way through to healing your tattoo. Say so it, it, this is a peace of mind. Say you, you get to go to bed and see. So if the dog gets into bed with them, it's, it's idiot proof. At night, you have to work faster. Yeah, yeah, you got that right. Yeah. Right, that's right, Chris. You can't fucking. Yeah. Well, hey, Malcolm. Yo. We got, uh, you got uh, half past the hour, brother. We got an open mic in 30 minutes. That's right. That's right. Uh, if, I don't know if you guys have anything that you got to plug before we uh, cut up here. I'm going to plug my East Van Warner Tattoo Company shop. You can buy East Van Cross merchandise online at www.eastvancross.com. The respect to be mailed straight out to you. And also, www.backsportglobal, our other web store that has our merchandise that supports our family, of artists around the world, positive family, and we're you not trying to money grab you. You want to buy stuff, buy it. <laughs> you don't have to swipe up every five fucking minutes on all my pictures. They swipe up, swipe up, buy my picture, buy my music, swipe up, swipe up. Fucking runt. <laughs> Anyways, was I talking out loud again? <laughs> <laughs> was I talking outside? My outside because it rhymes with your other favorite word. Yeah. Fuck sake, Chris. What about you, brother? Yeah, uh, I was just gonna keep going and and then try to try to open up my doors, you know. Like, uh, what do you want? I'm almost, you want to there. almost there. So I'm pushing yeah, through. So and so away. It's so expensive to get you here. Yeah, yeah. And like like I say, it, it's been long. You know, I applied in June for my business license, and then they said a couple months, and then like fuck for fuck November. I seen it's it's still not there, you know. So. Well, once you get organized, Chris, you come down to fucking Vancouver and then you go up to uh, Terrace for a while. Yeah, yeah. Two, three weeks here. yeah absolutely. Thank you so much, bag of cash. Work. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, no, absolutely can't wait. Man. It will be uh, quite an adventure. Like, uh, it's going to be nice going up west, that's for sure. All right. 
What up, Wes? It's going to be right, a bro, town. I'm going to go roll one because it is 420 and we do have another show coming Hey, up. hold on, Josiah. 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 How was it, buddy? How did you, how, how you enjoy the show, brother? Uh, it's awesome. I was originally kicked out by my dad and then Oliver took me in. That's it. And I've been working for him ever since. So uh, Oliver's like your stepfather. Redheaded we'll say a big brother, big brother. <laughs> yep, well, hey, you know what, Josiah, I'll tell you something. You're in good hands, you know that, right? All yeah. of us got a big fucking heart, so you're in good hands, right? And he, he doesn't sleep with little boys anyways, so you're, you're in good hands. <laughs> Watch out for Mad Child, Mad Child. Mad Child does that. Be careful. <laughs> I just call him Angry Kid now. Oh, fuck. Hey, listen, you guys. I love you guys. I'll see you guys uh, on uh, in a half an hour on uh, Open Mic. Right, yeah. Thank you to Rocco and to Chris for stopping in and, and cutting it up with us. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. And thank you, Josiah, for showing up as the ugliest front desk girl. We appreciate your time. You set the bar low. <laughs> Good to meet you, Josiah. Hey, uh, Malcolm, always a pleasure, brother. Always a pleasure. Action's up, Chris. Love, respect, brother. Oliver. I'm going to call you later. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you guys sent me another code, right? Yeah, you got it. All right, brother. Axe is up. Bury the needle. Bury the needle. Bury the needle. It's F this. Fuck this. <laughs>